I hope everyone's doing well. In continuation from the previous video, we're talking about these double integrals and volumes, particularly here at the sphere, because I'm gonna show you everything with respect to dx and dy. Thank you for joining me, I am Mr. Ish. So let's get started. x squared plus y squared equals r squared, a unit circle. If you solve for y, what do you get? Square root r squared minus x squared, but you limit its domain from zero to r. What is your graph? It's this right over here. If you were to rotate this, whether around the y-axis or around the x-axis, you'll always get here a hemisphere, half of a sphere. You'll have to multiply by two to get your complete sphere. But now, looking at this y-axis rotation first, let's do our procedure. You know all of this is shaded. It'll rotate and give you your hemisphere, zero to r, zero to r. Let's show you both ways of determining this volume. You're gonna take this dx integral and integrate it upwards with respect to dy. Since I'm looking at everything going and tracking along upwards, how do I know how to create my disks? Well, it's easy. If I'm going upwards with respect to my integral dy, I wanna create my disks in this way, having a certain pi r squared. Since I'm going upwards, my equation must be in the x equals format x is equal to r squared minus y squared. Now let's look at our dx integral. The lower limit is zero, it's gonna go straight up and it's not gonna deviate. My upper limit is deviating, so you have to bring the effect of that by means of the curve r squared minus y squared, and that's your dx integral. But you have to do square and then a pi to get this pi r squared effect from a lower limit to an upper limit with respect to dy. There is your double integral looking at everything integrating from lower to upper in terms of these cross-sectional area slices. You know it's coming out from here on x. You have a square root r squared minus y squared and then a zero, all of this being squared with a pi. You bring this in lower limit and you squared, you get a pi r squared minus y squared. This will serve now as your integrand or input for your dy variable. You can now, if you want, bring this in and put it right here to complete your double integral, and we can. And so everything will become now two, zero to r. You have a pi, which can come out, r squared minus y squared dy. Why am I really bringing in this two? Because when you look at this shaded region over here, all of this, and you rotate it, you're really getting just a hemisphere. And you're missing out on the lower portion of this entire solid multiplying by two you're capturing this part here on the bottom hence the two you know you can easily integrate this it's two pi you have a r square y minus y cube over three from an r and a zero you put these in you'll have a two pi r cube minus r cube over three complete all of this you'll have four over three pi r cube and that's a volume of a sphere using this double integral procedure with eventual respect to dy because we eventually did everything with respect to dy and now in the remainder of this video we'll show you the exact opposite where everything is eventually with respect to dx your representation again is just this you're doing an x-axis rotation this is zero r zero r this is the shaded region which is rotating. If it rotates, you know you're getting a hemisphere, but you're getting it this direction of a hemisphere. You have to multiply by two to capture all of that part, and you understand that. So we will bring in that two. How will we set up our integral over here? Well, think about this. Your radius is going from your line of rotation upwards, and your slices are in this direction. So you're going from, from this lower limit to the upper limit, to zero to r, but along the x dimension. Equation must always be here, y equals format, and it already is. Your dy integral will look like this. This dy integral is gonna integrate with respect to dx in that direction. Lower limit zero will not change. The upper limit is tracking a curve, so you have to bring that r square minus x square in a root. All of this represents a cross-sectional slice when you put the pi r square, pi r square. And then you're going from zero to r, and dx. Again, you're going in this direction. Before we're going upwards, here we're going this direction, and this will give you your volume. From here, you know you're getting a pi x and then square root r square minus x square zero, and then you have this square obviously, pi and then r square. You have here eventually pi r square minus x square. This pi parentheses r square minus x square will now serve as the integrand for your next integral. And before we forget, we should put this two over here. 
because we have to capture everything for that sphere. So everything becomes 2 pi and then 0 to r. We have a r square minus x squared dx. You can do this simple polynomial integration. You'll get your 4 or 3 pi r cube volume and it will be done. So I've shown you everything here with respect to dy eventually and with respect to dx eventually and the volume formula will be exactly the same because it's the same region of space that's being rotated but around different axes then multiplying everything by 2 to capture the other part. Now this video comes to an end. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.